Hey everybody, Rebecca here for the July 2022 budget review. We're doing a beers and budgeting review tonight. I am having a raspberry um, apple cider thing. Pretty tasty. So my July budget, uh, I had every intention of keeping my expenses down for July because I knew I was approaching the end of these home renovations, but yeah, July got expensive really fast. I'll show you guys everything that I have spent down to the penny as usual. Um, this budget was just a fail. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I will try to do better in August. Like y'all saw, I do have some bigger expenses planned for August. I mean, I have $1,000 going towards pet care in the month of August. So, you know, that's a big expense, but it is what it is. I am responsible for these little beings, so they are expensive from time to time. But my overarching goal for me and the reason I am on YouTube here is to show y'all my journey to reach financial independence and retire early. So expenses do come up, life happens. It just, it is what it is. Um, I got sick in the month of July. I finally got COVID. I am a healthcare worker. I've been working during this entire pandemic and never caught it until July. Um, so yeah, my income for the month, I expected my paychecks to be one thing and my second paycheck was a little less than what I expected because I ended up being out of work for a week. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, this is why I keep a buffer in my budget. I don't um, budget down to the very last penny. There is a lot of flexibility within my budget, so that's just what works for me. There was a season of time where I had a very bare bones budget and tried to keep my expenses as minimum as possible because I had a lot of debt that I was working on paying off and it was higher interest debt as well. So there was a season of time where I really was strict about my budgeting. Nowadays, I'm a little more loose with it because you gotta live a little bit, right? But still, I do have a goal of reaching financial independence to retire early. With that said, if you are interested in following the journey, then subscribe down below. Let's jump into this disaster of a July budget. All right, here we are. Looking at my Google Sheets budget, if you guys like this style of budget layout, I do have this Google Sheets budget as a free download in the description box down below. You can check the link there if you're interested. Starting at the top, as usual, my net income for the month. So I do have some income sources blocked out for privacy. I don't show my individual paychecks on here, but I do show totals down at the bottom. Y'all can see that I had budgeted to have about $12,000 that I was working with for the month, but I ended up doing a big transfer over from my Fidelity account. This is where I keep my remaining cash that I have for all of these home renovations going on. I transferred the last of that over into my checking account so I would have it available to use. So that ended up making my total go up to about $27,000 that I had to work with this month. So we will see where all of that money went once we get down into our bills and spending section here. Um, first things first, the carryover that I had from last month, this was just extra cash that is earmarked for home renovations. I had about $6,900 there. My Fidelity transfer I already talked about. I did cash out some of the rebate apps that I use um, and mention every once in a while on the channel. I slowly accrue balances in these apps and I decided to cash a few of them out. I cashed out my Ibotta account, had $36.20 there, and I cashed out my Get Upside app and I had $47.27 sitting in that app. Um, this is the one that gets you rebates on fuel for your car. And it had been a long time since I cashed that one out, so I had a, a pretty decent amount of money sitting there. I did also get a Ko-Fi donation from someone who had downloaded the spreadsheets that I have available for free on my Ko-Fi site, but they did send me $3 for the spreadsheet that they downloaded, which was super nice. And um, Ko-Fi does not take a fee, but PayPal does. So whenever you do get a tip on there, um, there's a small amount that goes to PayPal for fees, but Ko-Fi does not take a fee at least. But yeah, that was $2.41 that just popped up in my PayPal account one day. So that was kind of nice to see. And I went ahead and transferred that over into my checking too. And um, 
Lastly down here, this AdSense is the ad revenue that I earn from you guys watching my videos on YouTube. Once you reach a $100 threshold, then um, YouTube will cash you out. So I got paid $112.26 this month for making these YouTube videos. I don't get paid every single month for YouTube. Right now, ad revenue is pretty down, but um, about every two or three months, I'll get some AdSense money. So that's nice. And then lastly, this is my Fidelity Rewards uh, for all of the spending that I did in June 2022, which was also a very spendy month. I earned $92.03 worth of credit card rewards that automatically goes back into my Fidelity account. So yeah, I had a ton of money sitting in my checking account this month. Let's see where it all went in my bills and spending section. Will it fit on screen? Oh my God, it actually does. Amazing. <laughs> so starting at the top here house payment my mortgage is $735 like usual um, I owe about $130,000 on this house after that we have utilities I was budgeting $150 for my utilities every month which is power water sewer trash pickup but it's been really hot lately, so I went over here a little bit. I budgeted $150, it came in at $175.69, so I upped this budget for um, August to $175. We'll see how that does. Next after that is internet. It's $55.21 as usual. After that, gas for my car. <laughs> I budgeted $200 here, and I came in very much under budget. I came in at $99.64 for the month, and and this is mostly because I was out of work for a week, so I didn't have to fill up my car as much. I didn't really go anywhere very much. I was not feeling good, so yeah, at least I saved a little bit of money here on gas, which is a good thing because I absolutely blew my food and household budget this month. Y'all know I've been budgeting $500 a month. I usually do go over. I have decided to just up this budget to $600 a month it is what it is. Food is not getting any cheaper. And this really is just my catch-all category. Any restaurant spending or going out to eat also goes into here too. I just like to know overall how much I'm spending on everything. Food, groceries, household, anything I get for the pets while I'm out grocery shopping, alcohol goes in here, and fast food spending which when I got sick with COVID y'all, there was a lot of convenient spending this month. Um, that is why I blew the budget so bad in this category. I would hit the drive through a few times just because I was not feeling good. I did not want to cook. And when I did get groceries, I would choose things that were easy to make things like frozen meals that I could just throw in the oven and have it cooked and be done. I usually cook from scratch, which does save a little bit of money there, but yeah, I was, I did not have the energy to do all that this month, so the groceries and household budget got blown. And y'all, I actually did keep track this month of how much I am spending on alcohol. I bought beer this month twice, well, ciders, whatever. I spent money twice on getting a six pack of cider, and then I bought a 12 pack of hard seltzers, that was it this month so it's not alcohol blowing the budget it's just everything else that adds up for this budget so that's why i've decided to just up this to 600 dollars. i don't normally eat out very much it just so happened that feeling bad this month it happened a lot so i'm hoping that 600 dollars will be a little bit more realistic for me and i'll be able to stick to that every month we'll see the salon here um i do go to electrolysis clinic to get some permanent hair removal it's totally worth it and i budgeted 160 dollars for that this month but i actually did not go at all one week i was supposed to go the electrologist lady actually got sick with bronchitis so um she canceled my appointment and then the next time i was supposed to go i was sick with covid so i didn't get to go at all this month saved a little bit of money there as well i guess but this is something that will just keep showing up in the budget until i'm done with it i really think it is worth it it is so nice to not have to shave so <laughs> this is well worth the expense for me um this is a life upgrade for me windshield repair um i talked about this uh at the very end of june 
a rock flew up and hit my windshield. So I knew that this was going to be an expense in July that I had to deal with. And it was $169.04. Not too bad to get it fixed. And now we look at all of the things that I did not budget for ahead of time. Um, just expenses that popped up for the month of July. So building permits. I rebuilt the side deck and then expanded the deck around the side of the house and to the front of the house. So that was two different building permits that I needed to get from the city. 75 bucks a piece, so $150 spent there for renovation stuff. And since I rebuilt my deck, I did do a little bit of spending on <laughs> my deck, you guys. I bought some nice new um, outdoor lights and uh, little shepherd's hook things to uh, hang the lights up out on my deck and just things to decorate with. So yeah, I spent a little bit of money to make my side deck look nice. $438.16 spent at Lowe's. Next after that, Amazon. A lot of this is more coffee. I buy my coffee in bulk from Amazon. It's a little bit cheaper that way. And I got some more whey protein. I buy some expensive whey protein from there. And this is some vitamins and supplements as well. And also a few things for the new kitten, Bjorn. So, um, yeah, I spent $350 even on Amazon. Kind of odd that it came out to a perfectly round even number like that, but it is what it is. <laughs> Some of this is kitten related. Some of this is stuff that I was going to have to buy anyway, so I don't feel too bad about it there. Amazon has definitely been worse for me some months. Next after that, Richard, this is my neighbor that I have here in the neighborhood. He's a really nice man, and I did not even have to ask him when I was sick with COVID, you guys. I felt so bad for a week there. He just noticed that my grass was getting long at the house here and he came and cut the grass for me. I did not ask him to do it. He didn't reach out to me to ask for permission or for payment or anything. But when I woke up that day and I realized that he was cutting my yard, I wrote a check for him and put it in my mailbox and he, uh, he picked it up and, um, you know, I told him that I had been sick with COVID and I was just down the whole week. And he said that he figured things must be going on with me somehow or another because I don't usually let my grass get that long and he is correct. <laughs> And it, it actually wasn't just the grass, this $200. Um, he did also trim a magnolia tree that I have in my backyard. The whole tree was overgrown all the way down to the ground. And I had him take a few of the branches from the lower part off of the tree. So that way it's a little bit more tree-like. And honestly, it makes the backyard look a whole lot bigger now that there's more space that you can walk underneath this magnolia tree now. So I gave him $200 just for trimming my tree for me and for cutting the grass for me around here. I felt like that was more than fair and um, it was definitely worth it because I felt so bad for a week there, you guys. And then next after that, uh, Bjorn expenses. So when I decided to adopt this kitten, I have not had a cat in years, you guys. So I had zero supplies for cats. Um, I needed to get a bunch of things. And this was just a PetSmart trip strictly for him, getting a bunch of different stuff, everything you would need for a cat. <laughs> So I spent $259.46 at PetSmart getting stuff for Bjorn. And lastly, contractor. So I really have no idea how much I will be paying my contractor month to month. It just depends how quickly supplies get in and how available he is to work. So I know that he's gonna be a line item every month until all of my home renovations are gone are done, but I just don't know how much it is every month until the end of the month. And I look back and see how many checks I've written him. So this month I sent $7,000 towards the contractor. Uh, the remaining projects that we have here at the house are the fence for the backyard and the siding around the house. Right now there's a holdup on the siding. I don't know when it's gonna come in, hopefully soon. And I am hoping that we can finish these renovations for the house completely in August and then I'll make my video of the before and after and we'll go over all the numbers and all of that and then come September hopefully my budgets will get back to normal for me. I'm really kind of tired of having to budget for unknown expenses like renovations and contractor and all of that. I would love to know what a normal month looks like for me, how much I'll be able to spend, save, and invest 
and just get back to the basics when it comes to my budgeting instead of having big projects that I need to account for, right? So yeah, but it is what it is for the time being. I knew that there was gonna be some expenses for this house when I bought it. It was a little bit of a fixer upper. It needed stuff. So, you know, I'm happy with what I'm doing. Don't get me wrong. It's just taking a long time as renovations do. So the totals for my builds and spending section this month, I had budgeted for a little less than $2,000 um, before the month started, but I knew it was gonna be way more than that, if nothing else, because of the contractor. And I actually spent about $10,400 in the month of July. Most of this again is for contractor, but I did have several big expenses come up that I really didn't plan for ahead of time. This deck stuff from Lowe's, I didn't have to have it, but I did. Didn't have to adopt a kitten, but I did. Wasn't planning on getting sick, but I did. So, you know, life happens. This is why you need a budget that is flexible. Um, I am not one who has a lot of sinking funds like some people do. Not a fan of sinking funds. I think that they do have a time and a place for some people, but I'm just glad that I have enough flexibility in my income every month to handle expenses as they come up because my debt section is now quite small. I only have one debt left, that is my car. I no longer have credit card debt that I'm dealing with, personal loans, student loans, etc. That's all been paid off. All I have left is my car, that is $500 a month. I will pay it more aggressively at some point but right now I am not paying it aggressively because the interest rate is 1.98% and I have all these home renovations going on right now. But once the home renovations are done, since the market is down, I'm gonna focus more on investing than I am on paying this car off. So at least for now, I'm gonna be making just my minimum $500 payment every month for my car and slowly chip away at it until we get back to all time highs in the markets. Which brings me to my investing in fire tracking portion of the budget. I do not show the amount of money that I'm investing in each of these accounts anymore unless you are a member of the channel of the fire fam. It's just a security concern for me, you guys. I don't like how much spam is on YouTube. There are way too many spammers and scammers out there. I just am not comfortable showing the amount of money that I invest every single month publicly anymore. I do show it for members of the channel. So if you are a member of the Fire Fam, then I do film this portion separately for y'all. Look for that video under the members section. I do, however, still show my savings rate for the month and my percentage progress towards fire. So y'all can see here that my savings rate this month was pretty abysmal. I did not put anything extra towards savings this month. And as y'all saw in the beginning, actually, I ended up taking out the last of my cash position from my portfolio to put into my checking to have it available for these home renovations that are hopefully going to be done soon. So, yeah, my savings rate was pretty small this month, only 5.81%. And my percentage progress to fire, I am 16.32% of the way to my fire number. I'm getting there slowly but surely, but I still have a good ways to go, right? And that brings me to the totals down here at the bottom. Y'all can see my final balance down here. I still have quite a bit of money sitting in my checking account. All of this is going to roll over into August that I will have available for the home renovations. Hopefully they'll be done in August. And then um, the rest of this, I will put back into the portfolio if there's anything left. I don't expect that there will be though. So yeah, stay tuned to see all of the final numbers on the home renovations, hopefully soon here. All right guys, that covers it for the July 2022 budget review. Several unexpected expenses this month for various reasons. Um, <laughs> Like I say, this month was pretty much just a budget fail. Uh, it is what it is, life happens. So I'm just glad, extremely thankful actually, that I do have the flexibility in my budget that I can handle life when it happens. Um, I hope that July went a little bit more smoothly for the rest of you out there. COVID got me down for a little while, but it didn't take me out. So grateful for that. 
on my way to feeling a lot better. I'm back at work now and I'm still doing overtime like usual. So yeah, July was definitely a challenge. Let me know how it went for you guys down in the comment section below and I'll catch y'all in my next one. Bye guys.